Hi developers, I'm Hossam Dillahi, Microsoft MVP. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the different cloud platform offers. We'll see the EAS for infrastructure as a service, the PaaS for platform as a service, and the SaaS for software as a service. The goal of the cloud computing is to provide services in order to run applications. And those applications, they will run on virtual machines or on physical on uh, web application uh, servers. So at the bottom architecture of the cloud computing uh, data center will have different virtual machines running those services. And those virtual machines will work or will run on real physical uh, servers. So let's start drawing some architecture here. So let's say here, at the bottom, we'll have those uh, different uh, physical servers running on the cloud. So let's say here, maybe I have a rack of, let's say, 100 uh, physical uh, server here. So this is going to be a physical uh, server. This is a real one. And I will have, of course, multiple uh, servers, thousands of servers per uh, data center region. So this is yet another server and this one also maybe I'll have here another server. And of course each server is connected to the internet, is connected to a network. So we'll have here cables, uh, cables connected, connecting those servers into the uh, internet and this is the network component that lives inside the server. This will make sure those uh, servers are connected to the internet, but maybe also they are connected to each other for uh, private and for internal uh, networks. So here also we have a network component and the same goes for uh, all the uh, machines. In addition to the network, the physical servers will have also a real or will have disks. Those disks could be SSD. This machine also it will have its own uh, disks. It could they could also be HDD, the traditional hard disk uh, drives. And those servers also will run operating systems. They might run Linux or or, or um, Windows Server um, OS. So here, let's say, for example, this is going to run um, Linux OS. This maybe will run Windows Server, of course. And this here, maybe it will run also Linux. And of course, each one of those servers, they have its own uh, CPU, RAM, and also the, uh, H the uh, disk. So those are real physical servers. And all the servers provided by the cloud, they will be hosted inside those real physical servers. But not directly, so that if a consumer wants to create a web app on those servers, he won't be able to access directly those services, but and for security reasons and for um, for manageability because those have lots of memory and lots of uh, CPU. So the cloud provider will create a virtualization layer. This one will sit uh, right here, just on top of those all of those uh, physical servers, and we we'll call this one the virt cloud uh, virtualization. This one actually um, will try to virtualize, virtualize those different servers. So l like when you, um, when you create a virtual machine, then you have the hypervisor from which you can manage your virtual machine to get the resources it needs from your host machine. And this is almost what the cloud virtualization will do. It will access those different servers and it will manage anything that is deployed on those servers, including the disk, the RAM, the memory, um, the operating system, the network, and so on. 
This cloud virtualization will try to deploy virtual machines on top of those uh, servers. So this could use Hyper-V, for example, depending on the cloud provider, whether it is uh, Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud or Alibaba Cloud or whatever cloud you name it. So they will use one of uh, those. They can also use VMware maybe. And there is lots of hypervisors that uh, could be used in order to uh, provision virtual machines on top of this infrastructure. So this is, uh, let's say here, of course you might have multiple physical machines. So this is the cloud layer. This is the cloud provider, okay? On top of this architecture, we'll have the virtual machines. That's the f basic offer in the cloud. Almost everyone, anyone, uh, everyone offers this um, this service, the virtual machines. So we'll have virtual machines deployed on top of those vir physical servers. So here we'll have, for example, this uh, virtual machine right here. And a virtual machine will have its own uh, operating system. So this one will have an OS, let's say Linux, for example, here. And it will use some of the memory and the CPU available on the server that hosts this virtual machine. So if this virtual machine uh, is hosted on this uh, server, then it will use this CPU and the RAM. But again, it should go through the uh, cloud virtualization layer. It won't access those resources directly. So it should go th through this layer so that this layer will um, uh, will make sure that this uh, VM will take only the resources that uh, it intended to do. So this will take, um, so it have its own OS, it will take some of the uh, disk available here. So it will take, in this case, it's gonna take the HDD, but it can also access some uh, disks attached to other servers because the cloud, they can manage that. So it can attach multiple um, disks to this VM. And also it will have its networking capabilities and here accessing the network on the physical server. So the same goes here for the other virtual machines. We can create multiple virtual machines because we have multiple physical uh, servers and we can create multiple uh, virtual machines per one um, uh, mel uh, physical server. So here, let's say, for example, I'll have here the networking also, I'll have uh, maybe here I want to use SSD for solid state disk and here maybe I want to change the OS to be Windows instead of Linux. So this will access, um, uh, this virtual machine will be hosted on one of those physical servers again through uh, using the uh, cloud virtualization layer. Let's add another virtual machine. Let's say this one will use Linux as its operating system. It will use again SSD and it will have its uh, networking uh, component. The virtual machines offer, including the uh, networking, the storage, all of those, they those makes the first cloud offer, which is the infrastructure as a service. Those are the main three components for infrastructure as a service. Here, we take a virtual machine, we'll attach disks into it, we'll have a network defined, and then it's up to the, the customer to, um, to update this virtual machine, to uh, install the software he wants to use. For example, here, if he wants to use a SQL Server, for example, on uh, Windows, let's say he wants to install SQL Server here, then in this case, he, he will need to uh, make sure or to bring the SQL Server certificate. He needs to make sure uh, to update SQL Server to uh, maintain um, to maintain it up and running and to maintain also a high SLA. In the cloud, we are talking about uh, SLA of 99.99%. Um, so he, the consumer, 
is responsible for managing the anything that is deployed and installed on those virtual machines. That in some cases might be lots of work. For that, for this reason, the cloud providers have decided that they will, uh, they need, or they want to um, add another offer on top of the EAS. That is the pass. So they will tell you instead of you have bought a virtual machine in order to install SQL Server or to install your uh, web application, for example, in this case. So, I will take the responsibility of maintaining the virtual machine along with the uh, storage and the networking, and I'll give you only access to your SQL Server instance and your web app, so you don't need to uh, handle or to take care of all those the different components. So this what um, so in this case we'll have service defined like this. So we'll have here only uh, services for a web app, for example, like like the um, like the app service in Azure or Google um, uh, Google Engine, and we'll have other services for uh, SQL Server, for example for the database. We might have other services um, for different uh, applications, like managed Kubernetes, um, managed Kubernetes um, uh, instance, for example, as IKS in uh, Azure. So this, as we said, we create the pass layer. Note here, we don't need to, ha to handle the OS and to update it and to bring the certificate. Everything will be managed by, micro by the cloud provider. For the case of this um, database instances, for example, the cloud provider will make sure it is always up and running. It will, it will um, handle the uh, backup and the restore of the instances. It will try to maintain a high uh, SLA, as we said, um, SLA of 999.99% in the case of um, a SQL Server uh, hosted uh, or managed instance on the cloud. And the same goes for the web app. It will, the cloud will offer more services to scale up and out the different instances running my web app. And of course, those will, be on, uh, will sit on top of the uh, EAS. So this is for the PaaS services. Now we have another layer of services, which is the SaaS. So for the SaaS, instead of giving customers SQL Server instances and web apps where here uh, they need to handle the uh, runtime, of course, for, the, for their uh, application, here we'll have only access to a website where from that website we can manage the um, we can manage the uh, the application so saas applications are like um, the emailing platforms like gmail hotmail and uh, onedrive for uh, storage or uh, google drive and so on so those are um, saas applications built on the cloud so let's draw one of those applications here. Let's say here, for example. And because it will use multiple services here, I have spun it across the web app and the SQL server. So it will access those different resources. Maybe also it will access some uh, storage uh, services. Those one actually we can, we should add them here. As we have services for web apps and uh, databases, we have also other services for uh, storage and others for networking, okay? So let me just not forget that. So maybe here if I'm uh, for my SaaS app, maybe I want to use uh, different databases and then maybe I want also to, uh, to use uh, storage in the case of uh, Google Drive, for example.
So this is our SaaS layer, software as a service. With those three different offers, now we uh, we started having some uh, new uh, new offers like the container as a service, CAS. This one could run uh, Docker uh, containers on the cloud. So they have Docker runtime installed, and we can run Docker containers uh, with using this offer. Other uh, services are like the functions as a service, FAS. Those one will uh, run the um, code on top of your uh, for, for your application, and the cloud provider will make sure to scale uh, this uh, this uh, service for you. I hope this ex explanation was helpful for you and it give you uh, a clear overview of the different cloud uh, offers. So thank you.